Power Metal Resources is an aimlisted multi-project commodity group with 13 project packages across three continents, targeting nine precious base and strategic metals around the world. I'm joined once again by Chief Executive Paul Johnson. Hello again, Paul. How are you today? Oh, hello, Alan. Thoroughly depressed. Have you seen our share price recently? Shocking. Well, I have. I have. Yes. And of course, we last spoke in August at the uh, when the markets were, I think uh, we referred to them as challenging then for junior resource stocks. And here we are now mid-October. And if anything, markets are more challenging. What What's your take on this? Isn't it uh, purportedly Mark Twain that said the, mar the markets can stay rational longer than you can stay solvent? Yes, uh, indeed. <laughs> what's my take on it? My portfolio was lower. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm running out of excuses when I go home late because I'm you know working quite long hours at the minute. <clears throat> and uh, and Michelle says to me, well, well, yeah, you might be working late, mate, but the share price is down today. So I, I, yeah. I'm getting it from all directions at the moment. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we're getting on a bit, aren't we, both of us? We've been through a few of these cycles now. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm I'm like frustrated and annoyed, and uh, I default to humour to deal with it sometimes. But I think knowledge uh, and experience is quite an important thing. And b being through these phases of pullbacks, the market is very good at prizing the stock from you, uh, destroying your confidence, and taking you to the position where you're thinking of all the reasons why a company's not performing, why the management team needs to pull the finger out. As one person said to me to uh, the the other day, you know, on uh, social media. Uh, stop waffling, Paul, and just do something for the share price. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, okay. You know, we're near the bottom now. Uh, it's getting interesting. Uh, the danger, I think, and the serious danger for people who are investing in our space where they're taking uh, their capital and trying to make something for themselves and make their lives better is that they you, they enter these phases without experience. They yeah. uh take themselves out of their stock positions. They worry about capital protection and uh, they act in a way which is the exact opposite of what you need to do in these down phases, which is to sit back calmly, look at the companies and say, look, are the companies changed? You know, Have they depreciated in the quality of what they do or their potential? And if they haven't, hold on to them. And if you're looking at certain stocks and you're thinking, well, they actually have depreciated, I don't like the story anymore, it worries me, then you move out and go into something that gives you a bit more confidence and uh, security. Uh, I think our stock power has delivered and performed <clears throat> continuously since February 19 when we took control. Mm -hmm. uh, and we refinanced, restructured. I think our delivery in uh, 1920 and 21 has been aggressive all the way through. We've seen various share price uh, moves up and down in the period, uh, the, that two and a half year period. And we're in the, in this phase at the moment where the, the movement has been down for nine months. Now, as a contrarian, I would say that that's a good sign now because we pull back. Uh, we're still the same business we were. We're dramatically better, I think, as a business yeah. than we were in January at 3.45 pence share high. And we're currently at 1.75, 1.8 pence. What can I do? <clears throat> we keep fighting, Alan, because that's my that's our job. Well, Warren Buffett, uh, and I, I don't think anyone could say Warren Buffett uh, lacks experience. He's uh, he's now in his uh, late eighties, early nineties, um, and his mantra is always buy, buy when there's blood on the street. And of course, in these down times, he will be out there buying stocks and buying quality stocks, um, and that is the way forward. Um, I mean, we've talked about the we talked about the markets and. Uh, Obviously, the the commodity super cycle we're now in is well documented. Um, it ebbs and flows. Any market ebbs and flows, but investors yeah. have to understand that. Look at the metal prices at the moment. They've had a bit of a pullback, and now they're firing up again. Uh, mm. Nickel, copper, zinc. Look at the price of zinc. Wow, you know, really going for it. We're seeing gold. It's nudged through eighteen hundred again today. Uh, silver starting to you know to come back. Uranium's been punching. Uh, in recent times, you know, there's lots of positivity around us. If you want to build an extension on your house, you know there's a commodity crunch situation happening because uh, you can't get timber uh, and basic material supplies easily and the price is through the roof. You know, it's coming to us, everyone. It's uh, Our market is amazing. It will deliver dramatic returns in the junior resource space, but it will do so by scaring the whatever out of you.
I nearly swore them. Uh, by, and uh, by getting you to doubt your own investments, by getting you to question the management mm. teams, including those that are performing. You know, I love investor feedback, uh, but I get so many suggestions now as to what I ought to be doing to get my share price up. That if I actually tried to attend to each of them diligently, which is what I want to do, I wouldn't do any actual work in the business. So, uh, you know, we, I've got to stay focused. I would love it if our shareholder base can stay with us on this journey. I'm going to drive this company. I'm going to drive this share price. We are going to deliver. And we have to because one of my largest investments is Power Metal Resources. Okay. Uh, so, Paul, uh, on to the IPOs. And again, yeah. Uh, taking investor feedback into account, some uh, some of the regarding the upcoming IPOs, some investors have expressed concerns on social media that the exploration and work on the ground has effectively has effectively been parked on these projects until the IPO. How do you respond to that? Oh, I think I'd get a bit bored if that happened in our business. We've got quite a few IPOs ongoing. Uh, Okay, so let's look at them, shall we? Uh, Golden Metal Resources, the, the Nevada package. We're undertaking satellite-based work uh, in uh, the Garfield uh, project, and uh, that's quite significant work for us. We're quite excited about that. That's underway. We've been uh, we got hold of the permits for Golconda to undertake the work there, which is uh, high-grade near-surface gold based on historical information, and we'll be doing trenching there. So uh, that's another active program. We're obviously doing the due diligence on Pilot Mountain. That's quite a you know a hefty amount of uh, work, and also planning for what we will do with that project as we take it f forward, uh, subject to due diligence completion. Uh, so that's gold and metal. Let's zip over to Australia to First Development Resources. Uh, we've been undertaking uh, 2D seismic processing and we've been doing passive seismic work. I think we put a picture out recently showing, uh, you know, the area that they're working in there. And we're doing that because we're in the Patterson region. We've got magnetic bullseye targets and uh, that's uh, and we've got targets that are similar from a geological perspective to the Javier on discovery made by Greatland Gold. So we're yeah. refining those drill targets with this uh, seismic work uh, and it's pretty major program for us. If you go over to New Ballarat Gold, which is the Victoria <clears throat> spin-out package, uh, Victoria Goldfields, Australia, we have a geological team of three or four out uh, when they they can, of course, you know, with uh, local restrictions, but they've been pretty good at getting out in the field and doing lots of exploration work. That's a continuous ongoing program with a very capable and effective team. And then in our other uh, quasi spin out, as it were, we have first class metals where we sold our, our Schreiber Hemlo interest into them for a large percentage stake in the company. They yeah. are actively cracking on with the work programs in the field. Yeah, uh, so good. that's that's yeah. our four main kind of IPOs, as it were, at the minute where uh, that people know about uh, where we're active in the IPO process. Does that sound like we're sat doing nothing? Are we stagnant? No, it doesn't. But I'm going to bring you back to some comments on social media again. So we've got magnetic bullseyes here and district scale deposits there. But there is some speculation and we've had commentary come to us that many projects are early stage in regard to the discovery process and therefore unlikely to yield any results. How do you respond to that? Uh well, we do have projects of different, uh, you know, stages in development, uh, all the way from, you know, greenfield first stage exploration through. Mm. Well, not actually, we don't. Mo most of them are a little bit along the pathway up to uh, potentially. If you look at the Pilot Mountain project we're working on, the DD four, that's in mm. uh, that's a very substantial jolt compliant resource that's in that package. Mm. So it's a whole range of different things. Uh, realistically. Uh, Look at our valuation, circa 22 million quid, 13 project packages, probably 30 odd individual project areas within those 13 packages. Uh, you know, we are valued definitely as a very early stage proposition. We're valued as if we've got one or two projects as a typical AIM exploration company. Yeah. Uh, if we get in the market size a sniff of a major discovery, do you think our valuation is going to be 22 million pounds? No. I think we're going to be dramatically higher. And, and what people are buying now, and it's particularly important right at this point, is they are buying their belief 
uh, that uh, Power Metal, the management team, the operational team, and mainly me, I suppose, in that, uh, because I am the CEO of the business, that we can deliver exploration discoveries and that we can deliver corporate value through the IPOs. Now, because there is a degree of uncertainty just generally in the markets and also, you know, with regard to whether we can deliver, you get these uh, you get these opportunities that what I would say was, uh, you know, a very, very low price, a modest price. Uh, and as we build as a business and things start to happen, then I would expect with normal market conditions, and we certainly don't have those at the moment, uh, that we will see a significant adjustment in our valuation. You pay so much money for certainty in our business, so much money. You know, the only disappointment I have, actually, Alan, in, in, in well, apart from the frustration of the pricing of my stock and the price movement over the last 10 months, my only disappointment is that directors can't buy whenever they want. Mm. And I wish they could. Because, uh, because there are times when I would dearly love to step in and buy a significant amount of stock when I think that the valuations are wrong. But well, I'm that's... unable to do so for a whole variety of reasons. I don't think anyone could accuse you of not doing that, though, Paul. I mean, you've been snapping up stock um, regularly throughout the year. And, of course, you're now 75 million shares and counting, I think. Yeah, next target's 100 million, Alan. It's uh, – <laughs> we uh, – I, I do there's, like these – There's rounds. a man with skin in the game. <laughs> Why not? I run my own business. I see what we're doing every day. Uh, the workflow here is incredible. Yeah. You know, okay. just to my left, I have Mita, our investor relations manager, who's working constantly on all these different spin outs and the marketing and communications attaching there to the core stuff in power metal resources. Our presentation needs to change every five seconds because we're doing so much. You know, Oliver Fries, an exploration manager, come into this business uh, and just giving us that exploration edge that we didn't have before. I mean, we Good Lord, we needed him because we were growing as a business and needed the right capabilities. We got more people joining us uh, across different areas of our business that mm -hmm. will make a significant difference as we go forward. You know, sure. I, I think we have the best proposition on, on AIM, quite frankly. I'm prepared to stand up against anyone who thinks they've got a better one. With pound for pound as an investment proposition, I don't know any better. I'm not buying any other shares at the minute, to be quite yeah. frank. I'm just focused on pound. OK, can we go back to the IPOs again? Um, can you uh, can you give some idea of a runway on this in regard to uh, IPO dates? Yeah, well, uh, I've received a degree of criticism because the IPOs haven't already happened. Mm. And ironically, I'm thinking, thank the Lord they haven't. Because yeah. can you imagine bringing the, you know, we're coming out with all the, uh, the, the kind of... Uh, fanfare of, of our great you know first ipo into this market and everyone goes oh thanks but not really because it affects almost everything you know almost every corporate proposition is uh you know under the weather pricing wise at the moment so i'm grateful that we're not there already and we haven't been there over the summer to release these great opportunities to market i think when they do come out back end of this year and early next the the you know the first batch as it were i think uh we've got a good chance of a reasonable market uh we don't talk about time periods uh on the ipos if you do, you become a hostage to fortune the ipo yeah. process uh you're looking at typically uh, and a straightforward process, three or four months, once you you know formally commence the IPO, as it were. But that assumes that things <clears throat> don't take more time. And they can take more time for all sorts of reasons. Last year, it was because of coronavirus restrictions, uh, you know, uh, affecting people's uh, workflow. So there was a bit of a backlog. Uh, that, you know, it may well be that on your uh, documentation that you have to pull together. So if you go uh, for a, a listing on AIM, you have to do an admission document. On the main market, it's a prospectus. Uh, pretty similar things in many respects, but you have to produce a competent person's report, technical geological report, uh, a reporting accountant, uh, working capital forecast and all the rest. Uh, legal report, legal due diligence, and there's a whole heap of other things as well that have to go in there. I think uh, I saw an admission document recently that was 400 pages long. So at any stage, you can get uh, inquiries from regulators or from other parties, uh, and you have to do further work, provide further information, and it can add time on. So uh, totally not your fault. You can end up with an extra month. Now, it could all go through smoothly, So we don't, but we don't quote time periods. 
Uh, and we don't say, it's, you know, it's specifically going to be this. You you tend to be a little bit woolly, and that's deliberately uh, so. Okay. It, uh, and will you and Value Generation be taking part in that the IPOs, Paul? Yeah, I feel a bit like, uh, uh, you, do you remember Victor Kayam? Yes. With the Remington <laughs> shavers. Yep. And he said he liked them so much he bought the company. Yeah. I, I'm making these IPOs. It's my life the last two and a half years. These are the packages that I've been bringing together. And recently, with other people's help bringing projects and opportunities in, who I deeply respect and have great uh, you know, insight and capability. So we've brought together what we think are superb opportunities. FDR, you know, Javier on style targets, just a wonderful opportunity. Uh, yeah, in Navarre, there's some great resource opportunities in Navarre, mm. a fantastic place to work. Victoria Golf was one of the largest land packages in Victoria Golf was that everyone has been raving about. You know, yeah. some fantastic Hemlo Schreiber ground. So, yes, I'll be participating if I'm able to in these IPOs. <clears throat> it will be the focus of my investing strategy in the natural resource business, I think, going forward. I will not be throwing capital into other people's companies anymore because, quite frankly, there's no better than my own. And I'm tired of putting money into companies where I see management teams who don't work as hard as we do and operational teams that think it's some kind of lifestyle opportunity to pick up some consultancy fees and actually you know, have a nice time. Yep. We work continuously hard. Our spin-out companies will have the right management teams, the right drive and incentive. The, you know, they'll be locked in with uh, shareholders as the focus of what they do, just as Power Metal Resources is. So you can absolutely be sure that I'm going to be throwing as much cash as I can into these spin-out vehicles. Excellent, excellent. Well, Paul, uh, before we wrap up, um, just wanted to bring bring you up to date on the operational uh, 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 communications. We've seen drilling start at the Tati project in Botswana. Um, are there any further developments since the quarterly update on uh, October 1st that you can bring us up to date on? Yeah, the uh, well, we 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 yeah, we. we it's a difficult one to answer that actually without yeah, smiling. Yeah, you can actually bring <laughs> yeah. it up. Yeah. There, there will be further updates to the market. We're going, as I mentioned before, for the more material items in individual RS. Yeah. And then uh, the smaller items will be kind of uh, are deemed not material by themselves, but then in a cohesive announcement to the quarterly report, they, they become. You know material together so we will any material developmental news we will talk about so we've got you know assay results pending from silver peak uh we've got assay results pending from ofa uh, north lithium we've got assay results pending from malopo uh you know we're given that super nickel sulfide result we had recently we're doing some more testing uh we've got a whole heap of different things ongoing there the, uh, the the seismic work at FDR, uh, the stuff at Garfield, you know, the, the, there are going to be a, a good number of announcements, perhaps not as many as before. But uh, for all those people that said to me there were too many announcements, well, we listen to you and we've introduced the quarterly report to help deal with that issue. Good, good. Well, there are so many projects on the cusp of delivering here and uh, a very exciting outlook for power metal despite the markets um if you want to know more or want to know where the company is at any given time the url at the foot of the screen here will take you to the power metal resources key projects page on their website other than that just remains for me to say paul johnson chief executive of power metal resources thank you for joining us today thank you very much alan